So now we come to our media picks for the month, which uh, in a month where we have seen the likes of They Shall Not Grow Old, uh, a film with you know, true gravitas and a, and a true media pick, it has to be said, uh, we have not chosen uh, that movie. Instead, uh, in my case actually, I've gone for something that I really wasn't expecting to recommend, but I ended up very much enjoying, uh, and that is Netflix's Latin History for Morons uh, by John uh, Leguizamo. He is an actor who I most, well, I first uh, was introduced to his work when he uh, portrayed Luigi in the Super Mario Brothers movie. A modern classic. A modern... <laughs> Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody wants to. Die. So, um, so yeah. So and, Is and that his... with Bob Hoskins playing Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it's, 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 it's terrible. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so it, and his career has been has has been on an interesting kind of a series of interesting choices in terms of his roles. Um, for example, he has a small role in The Happening, which I quite enjoy as well. Actually, he. Uh, He's an interesting uh, character, and he brings his character very much to the fore in this 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 Netflix special, which is, I think, a, a filmed version of a stage show that he's that he's been performing, where he uh, is relating a family-based drama that caused him to uh, to to research in greater detail the Latin, as in Latin American, and native histories of of the Americas and in particular the North American continent and uh, and I I liked it I I, I did I've, I, I've, I've seen people criticizing it for various reasons but I actually would recommend giving this one a go I mean I, I did actually ask you to watch it what, what, what did you make of it well I, I knew nothing about it before I sat down to, to watch it mm -hmm. as you say it's a Netflix uh, comedy special it's uh, it is a a, a well-filmed uh, well-recorded well version of a, of a a successful stage show that he's been playing for about two years now in the States. Yeah. Um, and it takes the form of a... The framing device is his son's uh, relationship with his cultural history when he's asked to provide a hero for mm. Uh, mm. a school uh, presentation. Yeah, what's your American hero, for example? What's your American yeah. hero, that's mm. right. Yeah, or who? Who? Uh, who is your American hero? Yeah. And, mm. of course... Uh, the, uh, it, it comes out at a time when there is the so-called culture war going on in America about precisely what is American. Mm, mm. Um, so it's a very relevant piece. He's a very capable performer, physically, vocally. He can hold the stage. Um, and there are one of, for me, there are some priceless um zingers in it for example his uh, son standing up at, on columbus day and uh, 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 when everyone's celebrating the columbus discovering america mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and saying uh, and and saying um, what what does christopher columbus mean to you oh uh, he bought um, the uh, was it the massacre of natives and syphilis yeah is the, um, yeah, yeah. Is, the, is, is the line i'm paraphrasing slightly but that, that's the, that's the joke well yeah I mean, and so, something else that, that that i wouldn't want to necessarily put into our broadcast but yes yeah <laughs> no, no. Uh, do look it out on netflix yeah. i mean I do have some reservations about it. I think it's slightly overlong. I think as well the framing device of the family, um, the family confessional. Mm -hmm. It's a very American mm -hmm. form. I mean, Woody Allen was doing it in the nineteen sixties. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, and a lot of stand-up comedians are, are, have adopted it. Cause it's a it's a very fruitful form for for, for for confessional comedy. I think sometimes in this the family comedy actually gets in the way of the historical comedy and satire hmm. um hmm. that he's he, he's trying to put across um well, but but do, do you not think that that possibly there is an element that a very deliberate tactical element there in for, for the show in so much as he's trying to convince the audience of a certain historical narrative and a great way of getting an audience on your side is to present a sort of an emotive family struggle as well. Oh, no, I, I, mm. I, no, I absolutely see why he's done it. I just, mm. I, I just think some occasionally in the writing, a balance, the balance is slightly off. Okay, yeah. Mm. Um, so, you know, so the family, you know, there's slightly too much of the family 
uh, framing device before you get into the the, the 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 chalkboard lecture, which he actually does brilliant again. Lovely use of a of the chalkboard mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, to, to, for very a various side for various different gags. Although I have uh, to say, I have to say, I, 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 Mike, you know, as a as a as a good student, I was looking at that going, I could not have taken notes in this lecture. This. <laughs> Like, oh, we're, dealing with it. we're dealing with a comedy performance, we're not dealing with a lecture, that's the whole point. Well, and actually on that note then, what, what did you make of the historical narrative then? If this isn't a lecture, what, what, what did you make of the fact that he was very much lecturing? As yeah. that's in that well, I, I think we should also say, I mean, he comes from a very interesting current cultural background because yeah. he, uh, he himself is uh, Colombian by mm. heritage, mm. but he's uh, married to a Jewish woman. Mm. And so again, there's two very interesting, you know, um, in, in very important cultural minorities in in in, in the United States, mm. in, in that one family, uh, you know, and, and, and which makes a nonsense of the whole white uh, white power and uh, mm. you know a narrative that's being put out by the alt right at the moment. Mm. Um, you know, he, he's somebody. He, he's an actor. He's establishment. He's he's a, he's a successful uh, Hollywood and and Broadway and whatever performer. So you know, it it, it, it it's it, it shows how nonsensical to extent. All that is, but then in the sense he's speaking up for, in this, for the people of similar cultural backgrounds who haven't got the voice, haven't got the access to the Netflix cameras. Yeah, yeah. And the narrative that he's putting out actually is a pretty standard one in historiographical circles. Now it's about the um, the oppression and um, atrocities against native peoples from the uh, through the colonial period, um, the neglect of. Uh, the, the whole point about the the, the American era, the, the neglect of significant um, people from those heritages in in the national narrative and so on. So, you know, it, it it's not that unusual to see it see those ideas expressed. It is more unusual to see those those ideas expressed in the form of you know in, in a very capable uh, in very capable hands as popular entertainment. No, I, I agree. I agree. I think I think that there was a, there were a couple of elements that I found myself found myself uh, checking, you know, mm. in terms of how he presented certain parts of of his narrative. I was a bit, oh, but for the most part, his the scholarship, I guess, you could, if you want to put it that way, does hold water. Uh, I think what I think what strikes me about it though is the fact that. Uh, so, for example, when he, when when challenging the abiding narrative that the Spanish successfully conquered, say, the Aztecs because the Spanish were just better and had better technology, yeah. um, in fact, actually, say, uh, couching that in terms of it being a form of biological warfare <laughs> with yes. the yeah with the with European diseases uh, was was interesting. The, although there was there, there was a well, interesting, and also from a historical, as you say, from a professional standpoint, standard. Now we understand that that was one of the impacts of these people turning up yeah. from a nice in, into what not was necessarily a, nice a deliberate one, certainly at the beginning, but it was yeah, certainly, yeah, 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 it happened. It, it, it happened absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I suppose in that sense, though, I was a little bit, again, from a sort of hist- professional historical kind of standpoint, frowning at the at the implication that the problem was that Europe, in this instance, those European. Uh, diseases were a direct result of those people being somehow morally culturally you know vacuous it's one of those things where he was presenting a cultural agenda from his perspective and that's that's inescapable i suppose in some ways but but he i guess he's not restrained by the the requirement he's not writing he's not writing a peer-reviewed historical paper for a journal exactly yeah exactly and and there's no expectation polemic yeah, and, and to, so in that sense, there's no expectation from the audience, but also there's no, uh, he, he's not trying to be academically neutral in that sense. Um, so that was a little bit, but uh, the overall effect, though, and what I found interesting was that, yes, this stuff may well be more and more common knowledge to archaeologists and historians. It may well be part of the common uh, language when we talk about these, these interactions between historically isolated groups of people uh, or, or people who are isolated for a long, long time. But the fact that it has such cultural currency now. The fact that people seemingly want to watch it and the fact that, that people seemingly are learning from it shows that uh, that actually this sort of interaction is necessary. And so, so it, on the one hand, you can go, well, and, you know, if you know about that stuff, but the fact that lots of people are not 
uh, have not been learning about about this sort of history since they were in primary school when the the, uh, the whole narrative was completely different and the agenda was completely different yeah. really shows actually that, that, that that's one of the reasons why this 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 happened and one of the reasons why it is a good show and a necessary show so um so yeah if, 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 but also as well frankly if you just want to learn a bit more about about an, uh, well, about that perspective a, a new a new perspective on an old story about how america became america it, i think it's worth watching Definitely. I'd agree. I'd yeah, agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There are, there are many worse ways of spending an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I never thought I'd see uh, a man do that much sort of weird and wonderful things with a suit. <laughs> like, yeah. I'll leave it there. But but yeah. Wow. <laughs> like I said, he, he's, he's, he's a great physical performer as well as a a, a, a good writer and uh, and and and, uh, and and actor. Very yeah. good. So, Very so good. it's worth watching. It, it's worth watching for the performance alone. Okay. So um, now we move on to, to your media pick of the month. Mm. And this is one which I have heard, I've heard rumblings about. So what, 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 what is your media pick? My media pick of the month is a, again, it's another Netflix production. It's a Netflix original, uh -huh. um, which we're seeing increasingly now in uh, high-end uh, film production, TV production. The, the, the old boundaries of studio and television and, and cinema are breaking down rapidly. Mm -hmm. because of new technology and it's a film called Outlaw King it was directed by David McKenzie for Netflix uh, it cost 120 million dollars to produce mm. so we are not talking about a small backlot production here we're talking about a major epic mm -hmm. um, so if you think of um, Braveheart crossed with Game of Thrones with added history and um, added history partly because, and one of the reasons I wanted to uh, talk about this is the one of the historical advisors, um, as credited uh, on the film and on his Facebook page is uh, Professor Tony Pollard of Glasgow University. Okay. Um, but, uh, so, you'd like to think that um, where a certain Mr Gibson maybe played a little bit fast and loose with the history, there might be a little more um, verite about the... Uh, uh, the David Mackenzie version of Scottish history. It's it's about Robert the Bruce, and um, the War of Independence against the English in the early 14th century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and to me, well, it's a thoroughly enjoyable piece of uh, Hollywood hokum, really. Um, interestingly, again, it gives you an idea of the ambition of the piece. Uh, the Bruce is played by that well-known. Scottish actor Chris Pine. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, the um, the other I mean... um, <laughs> and, and, and the other uh, uh, leading uh, leading character, uh, the uh, Earl Douglas, Black Douglas, is played by another uh, Hollywood A lister, um, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, so you know, uh, 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 and the the female lead, such as, such as it is, uh, Bruce's wife, is played by Ron's Pugh. Again, very much a, a rising star. She's just been acing it as Charlie in the Little Drummer Girl for the BBC. Mm -hmm. She's um, very much a you know an actress on the uh, on, on the on the upswing of her her career and thoroughly deserved too. She's very good. Um, so yeah, we, we, it's, it's but a, what about the history? Tell me about the historical uh, content. Come you, you on, you can tell, can't you? I'm hedging here. I'm trying. To... Yeah, no, come on, um... come on. Because I I've heard, I've heard, <laughs> on, I've what? heard. Things along the lines that this is this is a, a fiction that it's a nonsense that it that, that it gets all sorts of things wrong about the specifics of warfare and clothing and weaponry and attitudes and all this sort of stuff. And, and all that is true. Okay. Uh, to to a greater or lesser extent. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know I'm, I'm not certainly not knocking Tony Pollard's work here. Uh, he's an expert on the period. Uh, but, but, but there's an old joke that the only person. Um, there's one person in the Hollywood hierarchy who's uh, immediately above the technical advisor, and that's the studio cat. Right, right. Um, and then, then the the person who makes the tea is it? Then, 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 then the person who washes up. Then the oh, person I see. Who oh, okay, okay, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I mean, look, it's a film. It's a fiction. Mm -hmm. It has a screenplay, which mm -hmm. of necessity 
compresses and conflates and changes things because they don't work in a narrative form and, and so on. Uh, 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 you know, start with the pluses. It looks great. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's, you, uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I, personally, I think it looks better than Braveheart. Okay. Um, oh, it's very okay. nicely shot. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, the um, uh, Visit Scotland or whatever the Scottish Tourist Agency is called will absolutely love it. Um, mm-hmm. The Talisker... Uh, distillery will love it because uh, part of it is shot in the region of, of where the uh, Talisker Distillery is on Sky. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's well staged. It the story it might it might be ahistorical in certain parts, but hey, it actually works as a as a, as a narrative. Um, it's slightly less. Um... So was it was that was was that was that your coverage of the negatives then? Was that was that? <laughs> No, I mean the action. The action scenes are well done. I come to that in the end, actually, because because um, uh, I, th- I think, um, you know, okay, uh, it's got, <laughs> no, it, uh, it, it's got, it, it, it doesn't. What, I, see, it, I haven't seen it, but what what is it that you don't want to say? I'm fascinated by this. I mean, did what did do we see an iPad at some point? I mean, what? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I I, I just think it, it, it's 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 trying to be. More historically, um, shall we say, respectable, shall we say, okay. uh, than uh, Braveheart. You, know, you don't have a hero with a messiah complex for a start. Okay. Um, although um, people have said that it's treatment of the Bruce, it makes him much more of a sort of romantic action hero when in fact the real Bruce was a calculating politician um, just as much as anybody else and mm-hmm. um, you know it just happened to end up on the winning side mm. uh, eventually mm-hmm. um, because he did swap sides um, yeah. You, yeah. No. and so there's that element to it uh, there's appropriate Monty Python mud and gore uh, okay. we get a disemboweling at one point Wow. Uh, when somebody you know, somebody's hanged and drawn which is not nice but it, it you know, historically that that event happened so mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. it's legitimate to show it um poor old uh, florence Pugh gets hung up on the on, on a castle wall in a wooden cage which looks a bit game of thronesy mm-hmm. to actually read actually yes she was bruce's wife was exhibited on uh, a castle wall as a as a, a punishment and a, and a warning um right. although she did live to tell the tale mm-hmm. um and I mean, I think the final—it's uh, it, uh, less homophobic than Braveheart, which wouldn't be difficult actually. But um, in dealing with the character of or alleged character of Edward II. Oh yes, there, there, the guy got thrown out of a window. Yes, I remember that. That's now. right. Uh, yes, yeah, in we, the movie. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, but also the, the, he was played as you know mincing, effeminate, you yeah. know, whatever. Um, so. Uh, but the and the final thing, and, and I think uh, it may well be a deliberate homage to a film that was made in the 1960s by Orson Welles called *Chimes at Midnight*, mm-hmm. which was mm-hmm. an adaptation of Shakespeare's *Henry the mm. uh, Part One, um, and uh, where the battle, famously a battle scene there, degenerates from uh, the full panoply of medieval chivalry into unrecognisable characters bashing seven shades out of each other in in mud mm. and it just undercuts all the romanticism of medieval chivalry and, and, and the the climax of uh, of Outlaw King isn't in fact the Battle of Bannockburn mm. uh, which is the the battle that's arguably the what uh, a lot of historians say is, is the one that secured Scottish independence by mm-hmm. destroying Edward the Second's army mm-hmm. uh, but actually an earlier battle at uh, Loudon Hill um, and where an outnumbered Scottish army under the Bruce uh, defeated a an English army under Aymer de Valance um, by clever use of the ground and the digging of trenches and you see this in in in, uh, uh, in Outlaw King. What isn't historically accurate though is that at the end of Outlaw King, the Bruce confronts Edward the Second, who is with the English army at Loudon, in this um, epic bloody sword fight in the mud surrounded by dead men and horses mm. and the Bruce then defeats Edward 
who then runs off back to England with his tail between his legs. Right. That's completely ahistorical. Uh, apart from anything else, it suggests that a, a medieval king like the, the Bruce would have allowed a defeated enemy king to run away to fight another day is nonsensical, particularly when the English had been in prison William the Lion, King of Scotland, in the Tower of London. Mm, mm. So you know, it, it's an emblematic ending. England is England hightails it out of Scotland, and Scotland it, it has its independence. Okay. Um, but you know, and and at the beginning of that, you you you've actually been on the receiving end of an English cavalry charge, which is a very striking piece of cinema. It's a great set piece. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you're standing there with the Scots as the English cavalry are charging towards you. Mm. Very very powerful. I mean, but then <clears> the, <throat> the whole battle generates into from these wonderful knights on horseback into this chaos of mud and blood and destruction and death it's a um, so it, it, it sort of it undercuts again the, the chivalric image that you got from you know 1950s epics like Ivanhoe and things like that okay so all these all these uh, uh, these videos that I've seen with um, crimes against medieval realism for example oh, uh, uh, in, in the thumbnail uh, wrong armor historical mistakes in Outlaw King. Uh, the big problem with the Outlaw King is this character. Uh, it, it, yes, it conflates characters, so what? It's a film. Yeah, so, so in that sense then, you think it's, it's, it's probably worth watching, yeah. um, and that, uh, that it's not... It's, it, I mean, because basically I haven't watched it because I, I didn't want to be... I didn't want to be really irritated, but you, th you think that it, it's, it's more... It's, for example, it, okay, as a as a as like a, a sales pitch, then if I liked Braveheart, which I do, yeah. for, even though they show the Scots taking York and whatever stuff that never happened, um, if I liked that, will I enjoy at least Outlaw King? Oh, that's a really difficult question to answer. I think you probably will. Okay. Um, if there is a criticism of it, and it has been criticised for uh, for uh, things other than crimes against history. Uh, it may be, it, it's sort of possibly slightly overlong and maybe just a little bit earnest and dull. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't quite got that in-your-face bravura that Braveheart has got. On the other hand, I think, you know, some, sometimes, um, certainly some of the things that Mel Gibson does in Braveheart, I think are pretty close to the edge in terms of being actually quite distasteful. As I say, I think the portrayal of um, Edward II as a mincing queen, there's an implicit homophobia there well um, but also as well in many respects and, Bra Braveheart is arguably much more about or was much more about Scotland at the time than it in, in that is at the time that the film was released yes than it was about Scotland at the time of uh, Robert the Bruce you know it was much more about about oh, yeah. Scottish identity it was in the it was in the sort of the the air that the SNP was getting more and more votes oh, yeah. Scot Scottish National Party so for those people who, who... it was the t uh, absolutely yeah. and it, it, yeah. it made Scottish football fans start to paint their faces blue and things like that exactly yeah yeah uh, and, and therefore yeah. of course of course the the English heir to the throne is put, is portrayed as a mincing little you know uh, slight of a man you know and 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 those aspects of his character are brought out because that's you know, we're not we're not those people. It's not it's portray it's that sort of otherism. So, I mean, arguably, yes, Braveheart says a lot more about yeah about Scotland in the nineties than it does about uh, yeah. I mean, what I will say is it has some good performances right down the cast list. I mean, uh, I made a joke about Chris Pine earlier, but actually, you forget he's Chris Pine, American actor. He, you know, he he holds the the screen very well as 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 the Bruce. Okay. Um, and um, you know, as I said as well, Florence Pugh does very well with not very much as as, as uh, Queen Margaret, I think it isn't it. Yeah. Um, sorry, uh, uh, Elizabeth. Sorry, uh, Margaret's the, his other daughter. Um, but you know, so and 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 key, key elements of it are are historic accurate. Others aren't. Like I said, so what? It, it's film. But, but I said the the worst thing you can say about it is that in parts it's maybe a little bit slow. Okay. Okay, well, we want to avoid that. We've talked for a, a goodly while, a, a amount of time about these two, but I think it was worthwhile just exploring and deconstructing those the, our media picks this month, especially as I say in the context of not picking, for example, uh, they shall not grow old. Then well, the again, that, uh, well, can I just say that I think yeah. I, I, I did say it during the, the segment we did on they shall not grow old. Mm -hmm. I think these are, in a sense, see them today, gone tomorrow, media picks. 
I think yeah. They Shall Not Grow Old is actually a far more significant piece of filmmaking, and that's why it was worth a full segment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah precisely. So, Netflix, uh, take, a, take, take a look if you, if you have Netflix. Well, we've made it through another watching brief. And I have to say, just, just people at home, this month has been an interesting one. You may have noticed that we, we've swapped costumes at one point. We had to film this over the course of two separate days, four days apart. <laughs> Not because we were arguing about format and, uh, or, or which channel to actually broadcast on, which is currently the case with the uh, fatuous idea of a debate about Brexit by two Brexiteers in yeah. the UK. Sorry, don't get me going on that. No, 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 no. It, it, yeah, you, you went, you, you went, you went all political, um, but uh, but yeah. So so uh, Tr Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn are arguing about which channel to appear on to discuss the, the Brexit vote next week and whether they're going to go on before Strictly or after uh, the, uh, the the X Factor or the other way around. I don't know, and I really don't care. It's a farce, isn't it? It's a farce. It is a farce. It is a farce. But uh, but on this, yes. So this this has been an interesting month. Uh, but next month is going to be our uh, Christmas special, uh, Secret Banter. And uh, we, we have some interesting ideas as to games we might play as well. So, so hopefully next month, this Christmas special will be much less arduous to film. But thank you very much for your time, Andy. Hang week. on. Oh, less arduous? And we're talking about a Christmas party here, Mark. Well, OK, fine. OK, I I'll get the sherry. Um, I've got a scanner up there. I can sit on it if you want. And, no, you know. no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep clear of broom cupboards. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No broom cupboards. Don't photocopy your backside. No, uh, no. But we should have a lot of fun next month. So, we are yeah. serious archaeologists. We are. We are. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And as ever, guys, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.